Hi there. Is there a place or two that when you visit, you come alive? Maybe it's a distance away, like a, a mountain meadow, um, a, a breeze that brings the, the scent of the ocean to you. Maybe it's a, a mountain view somewhere, or perhaps it's nearby, like a, a favorite chair in the morning. Um, or maybe a, a walk through your neighborhood in the cool of the, uh, of the, of the evening. One of my favorite places where, where I come alive is an emerald pool in a, on a secret river in Wyoming. <clears throat> Don't even bother to ask. Um, since the late 1960s, I've been wading through its long, slow, meandering waters and scanning the currents and every little sinister snag as I hunt what lies within it. And the very moment, it seems, that I enter the water, I, I find myself uh, sighing deeply in welcome and in relief. It's as if the, the divine masseuse has begun gently massaging the cares of this world and the deep anxieties that I carry sometimes and that have knotted me up <clears throat> and that make me kind of you know, rigid and fake and mechanical, a, a, a guy who goes through the motions. I don't like Ralph the fake. I don't like Ralph the robot. I don't like him at all. He's not real. But somehow I can be held captive by him, a, a sort of hostage from myself. But not in that river. I get myself back. There's a better way, there's another way that brings me back to life. Maybe you've noticed it for yourself as well, and I don't have far to go to find it. Years ago, God worked in me in such a way that I discovered Him to be the greatest treasure ever, by far. Not simply because of His value, supreme, uh, though it is, but because of what happened to me when I treasured Him. It, I wasn't simply dazzled by what I found, like a, like a pirate might be when he lifts the lid on a treasure box. But instead, the radiance of what I found in him affected me. I was filled with the Spirit, God himself, and I became the best Ralph possible. I became so much more happy and so much more real. In other words, my treasure treasured me, and I was forever changed that first time. And really, I've been hooked on treasure and the hunt for treasure and to stay with it ever since. After that, no commands to obey or tithe or pray or read or witness were really necessary, having been made superfluous by the one command. Ralph, enjoy your treasure. Ah. That was the one thing that worked. And it happened again this morning when resisting the temptation to pick up the newspaper or to turn on the news or uh, turn on my computer or something, I, I turned my thoughts toward him. They were very, very amazing thoughts. Something like, well, Father, here we go into another day. What are your thoughts? Whether about me or what's happening, what are you thinking today? And it didn't take long before the sort of stone moved, and there he was, treasure. And I was treasured back. Ta-da! As a result, Ralph the fake and Ralph the robot, <clears throat> who were sort of, you know, lurking on the sidelines of my thinking, vanished, driven away after a simple turn of my thoughts. The kingdom of heaven, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 13, is like a treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and in his joy went and sold all that he had, and he had that field, bought that field, That's because he had found the very best thing. The next time you've lost your way, resist the urge to go faster in order to get where you're going. You won't make it. It doesn't work that way. Instead, get off the common avenue, the the, the, the commonplace thing you've been doing. If only for a minute or two, it just takes a moment to turn your thoughts to God. And by that, you'll return to your treasure who lives in you and who treasures you. 
and he will dazzle you back to yourself. And that is really good. Really good. See you later.